Alleluia, Christ is risen. Simple answers. That's what we're looking for. Simple answers. Simple answers for life's increasingly complex problems. Simple answers to make our life and our world easier to manage. Simple answers for the complexity that has become everything. While our need for simple answers for all life's questions is increasing, it has always been strongest in matters of faith, in things of the spirit, in issues involving religion and ethics. What must I do? What must I not do? When, where, and how should I do it? When it comes to matters of life and death, to things that really matter in life, our questions and expected answers are inversely proportionate. The more complex the question, the simpler the desired answer. Life, we say, is already complicated enough. Early on the morning in the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the garden to look for a simple answer. And when she confronted the one she mistook as the gardener, she asked an uncomplicated question. Where have you laid him? This question presumes a simple answer. In fact, it presumes the simplest answer of all. Mary had already heard that answer. She had actually seen that answer pronounced in the name of expediency or, or good order or maybe just as a little power play. A definite, conclusive, and final answer. The simplest answer of all. No. No. Death. The final answer. The last word. You see, that's the problem with simple answers. They always start with no. They always look like death. <clears throat> Mary was so accustomed to that simple answer, so used to hearing no, so used to seeing death that she couldn't conceive of a viable alternative and she couldn't take any more complications in her life. Where have you laid him? That was her question. All she wanted was a simple answer so she could get on with the rest of her life. <coughs> Mary heard no simple answer from the one she mistook to be the gardener. We hear no simple answer from the same one today. All Mary heard was an affirmation of who she was and what she was and of whom she was meant to be. When the one she mistook to be the gardener opened his mouth, all Mary heard was her name. Nothing simple, just her name, with all the intimacy and all the energy and all the authority and power and trust, God's trust in her, that knowing and saying her name implied. If Mary thought her life was complicated before, imagine how it had become now, after she recognized him, after she heard a better word than no, after she saw a better thing than death, after she heard the risen one tell her that she had worth and she had power and she had authority and trust to be and to think and to do what she believed to be right without 
any fear of contradiction, even from God. Complications? You bet. Because instead of a simple answer, she heard affirmation. Instead of no, God said yes. Instead of death, God gave life. Instead of rules, God just knew her name. Dear friends, we are living in the most complicated, most confusing, most crazy time in all of human history. That is not an Olympic statement. Those are the facts. Our reaction to almost everything we see or read or hear these days is really pretty straightforward. We think, that's nuts. It's crazy. And so it's not surprising that we long for simple answers to every one of life's questions. God's answer to every question is Jesus Christ, not a simple answer. Really, it's no answer at all. Not an answer, but a promise. A promise that God loves you and that God trusts you to make your own response to the complexities of life without being afraid that you'll make the wrong choice and have to live with its consequences for the rest of your life or even forever. In the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God rejects simple answers. God rejects the simplicity of no. God rejects the finality of death. And instead, God chooses the complexity of yes and all the complications that accompany a promise. Complicated, you bet, but absolutely affirming and fantastically freeing. In Jesus Christ, God knows your name. And God affirms your worth. Through our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God knows all our names. God affirms all of our worth. And God trusts us, God trusts us to faithfully respond to the complexities of life, not with simple answers, but with the greatest complexity of all, the complexity we call love. And lest we fear, and as we doubt God's love and trust in us, and as we long for the complexity of no in place of the complexity of the simplicity of no in place of the complexity of love, God does one more, even greater thing, which God did for Mary and for all the disciples, and which God still does continually for each of us at every Mass every day. Jesus comes among us to show us in the bread and the wine his hands and his feet and his side. Jesus comes among us. And this is what he says. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. And get on with your life. No simple answers just a promise, an affirmation, an acknowledgement of your surpassing worth. Just trust in us, from God, to do God's will, not with simple answers, but with all of the complexity of love. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen.